Hello and welcome to tonight's Get In Tune. I'm Michael Gracia and I have a really fun show tonight. Um, I'll be bringing on my guest in a few moments. Um, but before I do, as usual, it is time to show this week's whiz. This week's whiz was was a, uh, um, uh, a single panel gag. I'm going to pop it on the screen for a moment and then take it down in about 15, 20 seconds. Doesn't take a lot to read this one this week. All right, and that is this week's Wiz. Uh, remember, you can follow me at the Wiz Comic, which is below. Uh, now, my guest for tonight, he has been on the show before, but he's never been spotlighted on the show, and I've wanted to do this for a while. Um, he's been in the business for a, a long time. He's had a very interesting career, always fun to talk with, and he has a Kickstarter starting very soon for his own character, Astron. Let's bring on tom siaka hello tom all right where's the applause oh here so, all right thank you thank you uh, actually, actually there is a there is an audio uh thing yeah, you like, like a, where let me see little... is it still yeah hold on that's what I, that's what i'm gonna hear yes thank you yeah. thank you that, okay. <laughs> i need to thank start you. using that more exactly <laughs> so first of all thank you for coming on tonight no problem um I've been wanting to have you on the show, just just you. I know we usually bring you on with Ray and a bunch of other people, and we we talk a lot and, and stuff. And we got we always have great conversations. But you've had you you've been doing comics for a while. You always have interesting stories, and I am a big fan of your Astron character. So I really wanted to sit down and talk with you about that. And you're going to have a Kickstarter coming out soon. But before we get into talking about that. For those who don't know you, can you tell us a bit about yourself? What got you into the industry and some of the stuff you did? Um, okay. Uh, uh, try, trying to keep it short because I could go on for two hours about the beginning. <laughs> but, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. Uh, I was a big Superman fan from from uh, two, three years old, watching George Reeves. I remember when George Reeves died. I was like four or five. Um so I, <clears throat> I learned to read from comic books, reading Batman and Superman. Um, later, uh, went to Cardinal Hayes High School when I met this guy named George Perez. And uh, he was a pretty darn good artist. And I was a pretty bad artist, but I actually learned from George. And then I was his first fan. And then, uh, you know, we were like the only two, like, initially comic fans in the whole school. Cardinal Hayes mm -hmm. High School, if people don't know, it's a boys' high school in the Bronx. Um, people who graduated there were, from there were uh, people like uh, Martin Scorsese, uh, Regis Philbin, uh, George Carlin, some wow. other people. Um, so uh, George and I started doing our own little doodle comics and he showed me his drawings. You know, he loved doing, you know, the Avengers and uh, Justice League, you know, which is no surprise because of what he did later. And I was you know, trying to draw. And then, and then um, around the 1969, 70, around there, <clears throat> and I said, oh, you know, I want to come up with my own character. So I came up with this character. Initially, he was called Astro Man. Astro. And uh, uh, Astro Man was a um, uh, basically a, an amalgam of an Earth astronaut and an alien bionaut. The two spaceships crash in space, a huge nuclear explosion. The two uh, uh, life forces form into one, one being, and uh, that was Astro Man. Later, we called him Astron, but Astro Man was the original. So I wrote and penciled it. George inked it. Hmm. And we did these things on. Uh, uh, we bought these eight by ten pay, uh, um, art pads at Woolworths, which I think were like ten cents or a quarter. And then we we inked it with with flare pens. Oh. 
okay. which I think they actually still make. Um, and uh, that was uh, the, the first story that, that George ever inked of anybody else. Wow. And uh, I found uh, a few years ago, I actually found the, the last page, the original page. The rest of it, I don't know if I, if, if, if any other page exists in my files or boxes, which I have two storage units of stuff. It's possible most of them were lost in a move mm. in 1980, um, along with a portfolio that had originals of George's, original niches from Superman versus Muhammad Ali. Wow. So whatever. But yeah, I do have one, one page which will show up in the graphic novel uh, as, a, as an extra. And maybe later on, when Ray's on, I will get up and uh, find it in the in the cabinet you okay. know, to show people. Uh, in any case, uh, so George and I we started doing all this stuff, and we did fan we did some artwork for fanzines, blah 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 blah. Factors Unknown, which was the first one we did, and then uh, <clears throat> when we graduated from high school. We both were like hanging out with Rich Buckler and assisting him, et cetera. And because uh, Rich also lived in the Bronx, and uh, we did a fanzine called Conjure. And then around that time, uh, George started um, doing stuff at Marvel. And then I, around the same time period, I started doing some writing for Marvel for the black and white magazines for Archie Goodwin. And then I started doing a lot of stuff for Don McGregor, who, would, who then he took over the black and white magazines. And I did a bunch of stuff for him. But it was all behind the scenes because. He was doing humongous film reviews. Okay. And, um, and I was the one, because I, I was going to college also at Bronx Community College, reviewing films. I had the connections with the film companies. So I would supply the photos. So he did like this entire issue of Man with the, of Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, which was a Man with the Golden Gun, James Bond um, review, because he hated the movie. Um, so I supplied all the photos and I was paid $20 a photo so I made more money lending them photos for all these different issues the Billy Jack and some others that I would make writing so, and I took and I took uh, uh, Don to the screening too at the Reveille Theater so um, but then you know after that I uh, somehow got to to assist Stan Lee on a bunch of things. You know, he, he'd come down to the office and I would be there hanging out, you know, after school and he'd say, hey, Tom, help me with this. Help me with that. You know, I need your help with this. So, uh, and then eventually he goes, hey, Tom, can you help run the Marvel Con for, you know, for me? You know, I was like, oh, okay. You know, I helped run the Marvel Con in 76. And then Vince Coletta became art director at, at DC and I had been assisting him a bit. He, he told me, well, why don't you come and uh, I'll get your job at DC. You can be my assistant there. I was his assistant. He was the art director. Mm -hmm. Technically, I was the assistant art director. Technically, not money wise, but technically. Yeah. You know, so when I was there, I, I discovered, I suppose, like Trevor Von Eden and uh, well, Frank Miller, who I had known hanging out with him in the village. Um, and I brought him up there. And he got his first gigs at DC, and he never paid me back money I lent him for dinner, like forty bucks. He owes me. <laughs> uh, Trevor Von Eden, and then see Gary Cohen. I helped uh, Paris Collins. You know, so there's a bunch of people that you know, that uh, you know, and then you know, and I brought George, by the way, to his first <clears throat> comic convention. He'd never been to one, 1971, and that's oh. when we were trying to. I was trying to be his agent, so I was trying to get him a job at DC or Marvel. So I showed his artwork to like Neil Adams, whatever. And it was very nice. He says, well, you, you know, there's possibilities here. You need some help with anatomy. He sent us over to these guys doing this, these fanzines. He goes, well, these guys could probably print your stuff and it's a good way to start. And who the guy was, it was uh, Paul Levitz and Sal Quartuccio. <laughs> Paul was 13, was doing the comic reader. Sal Quartuccio was doing a pro zine called Phase. So they looked at the stuff, and then next to them was a guy named Jim Glenn, and he was doing a fanzine called Factors Unknown. 
So then that's when we started doing the fanzine. So I know, so Sal, who, who became, you know, a publisher of, you know, art prints and all this stuff, mm-hmm. pretty big. And then, of course, Paul, we know what happened with Paul. Yeah. So, uh, so I know all these guys from the, but anyhow, so I worked at DC and eventually then I published, uh, while I was DC, and I'll give you the story. While I was at DC, I did the famous Astro, Astro Comics, Comics, yeah, number one. So I, I revived Astron Star Soldier. Hmm. I, I, he I, originally was not called Astron Star Soldier, but that's something as I was doing it. And then I'm gonna get, oh, okay. I go ahead. I was gonna give uh, you the screen so you could show the, the, the comic better. So if you want to hold okay. the comic up. And I, I'll, I'll hold the, the so the back cover. The front cover is by Mike Grell. Mm-hmm. The back cover is by Walt Simonson. Wow. Okay. The inside front cover is by um, Garcia Lopez. Jeez. And then, and then the this initial story I got is, is one of the first. Um, um, they call the uh, um, uh, not, not gang. Uh, it's it's a story inked by a whole bunch of different people. Yeah, you know, I forget, I forget the term of it now. But uh, so Rich Buckler inked some of it. Tex Blaisdell, Joe Rubenstein, Jack Abel, um, uh, John Workman, uh, a whole bunch of people worked on it and and lettered it. So you know, a whole, whole I mean, bunch just, of superstars. Yeah, I was going to say the, the list of names just in that book alone is. It's phenomenal. Yeah, well, I, I Shanghai them all because I was working there, so I, I was you know penciling the book, and I would just like pass pages to guys. Say, you got some time to ink this, you know. And, and a lot of them would say, "Hey, hey give me some more of that stuff to ink. That's fun, you know." Yeah. And Tex plays that was great. He inked a lot of it, of course. And Tex was inking DC stuff at the time, mm-hmm. Kurt Swan, but Tex was. An original golden age artist that he had worked on, you know, Black Hawk in the '40s and all these, these golden age books at Quality and and later DC and then I think at the time he was doing the Little Wolf and Nanny comics for two, so he was like a veteran. So yeah, he worked on some of this stuff. So you know, he was a great guy. You know, he had he had stories too. You know, but yeah. uh, in any case, uh, um, um, this will of course will be reprinted in the. The Astron graphic novel coming on on Kickstarter. Starter. And then, which, by the way, print. before I forget, let me throw the Kickstarter link in the in the comments so that everyone can go. It's not live yet, but you guys can go uh, become notified. You know, save it so that you'll be notified when Tom launches it live. Um, this will go to all the places I'm streaming right now, you guys. You can check it out, you know, in another window. Don't don't leave the show, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's a really it's a really cool, uh, really cool, uh, co- you know, comic, uh, and the character is very interesting. Oh yeah, the other thing I have here I, I forgot is uh, is a pinup by uh, this guy that was uh, unknown at the time, Dave Gibbons. Jeez. <laughs> oh my god, a little so, uh, yeah. I I had bought this this piece of artwork from That's Dave gorgeous. when when he uh, when I I met him in in, in the UK, uh-huh. um, and uh, for twenty five bucks, and then I said, "Is it okay if I print this in my book?" He goes, "Yeah." So somewhere I have a a letter from him. He said, he, he thanked me profusely. He goes, "Oh, this is the first piece of artwork that's been printed in in an American comic book." Nice. So so I started Dave Gibbons, and he says. If you want any more stuff, I'll be happy to do it for you. Of course, that I didn't do another issue for a few years, and by then, you know, he yeah, he was big. came big, so whatever. But but I I yeah. did, and I did sell this artwork a few years ago because I needed to pay bills. So, but uh, but I still have this. This will be reprinted in the. Uh, That's nice. Oh, I got Bernie Bernie Wrightson too. There's Bernie Wrightson uh, little, here also. Yeah, my in God. this and uh, whatever. There's, there's a lot of. So, so a lot of stuff will be reprinted in the, uh, yeah, in this uh, this here book. Now, what this year was book. Did that book come out? This was uh, uh, well, I was putting it together like in '76, and it came out in 
probably the summer of 77. Okay. And uh, if we have a couple of minutes, I can give you a, a quick funny story on how it got printed. Absolutely. I'd I, a, I, 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 I would love to hear how the book got printed. Which, it, which has never been revealed before. So this is an exclusive to, exclusive to Mike to. Gracia's <laughs> Tune In. Get into okay, it. So, so I worked at DC Comics. So I was basically a glorified assistant, you know, mm-hmm. and a basically... Uh, but but I was under the auspices of either Vince Coletta or Jeanette Kahn. No one else could use my services mm. for for doing things or yeah. getting stuff or whatever. You know, a glorified gopher. But I got to see the inside mechanics of everything. That was mm. the best thing about it. <clears throat> was that so? So being assistant to Jeanette also, <clears throat> I was the go-to guy. Was here, Tom, um, Mario Puzo just came in with the first draft of the Superman script. Can you Xerox it for us? Sure. Of course, naturally, I, I read it too. And I have copies of the the uh, the outlines of the first two movies with all the cut scenes and different things that never happened. Or, or yes, uh, you know, uh, Neil Adams needs help with the Superman versus Muhammad Ali, so I helped Neil on that. So I went around the city finding as many old sports magazines as I could with reference for Muhammad Ali. And and if I remember correctly, you made the cover, didn't you? I'm on the cover, yes. Yes. And I helped him with some backgrounds too. And I saw Neil in his underwear, but that's another story. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> that was that was a whole thing, but anyhow, because uh, I had I had to. Uh, sometimes go to where Neil was staying overnight in the city and uh, uh, he wasn't coming into the office so I had to go to the apartment on Central Park West and pick up the underwear, uh, pick up the artwork there and Neil would be in his underwear or you know, t-shirt or whatever. But they have, uh, but they have the printing of the book. So, yeah. So I had assembled the book from, you know, annoying all these people and getting them to do artwork for me, basically for free. And uh, um, like Walt Simonson, he did the backup. He says, "Just give me the artwork back, and I'll do it for you." I said, "Fine." You know, mm-hmm. I gave uh, I gave a, a small fee to Mike Grill for the cover. Mm-hmm. Everyone else did stuff for free. And then John Workman had just had worked at DC and just became the art director at Heavy Metal. So he helped me, you know, doing the logo and lettering, and then mm-hmm. at the same time I was helping him because he didn't have an assistant art director. So I was going there after work and then helping him with the heavy metal stuff. Yeah, so that's around the time when they were doing the Alien book, and this is before his brother, the late uh, Bill Workman came from Washington State to become the assistant art director. So there was about yeah. a two-month period. And because uh, John, last year at, at Bill's funeral, he reminded me, you know, you were the art, you, you know, for a while you were the assistant art director, Tom. I said, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, you're right. You know, so, they have, so once I got it all together, it's like, oh, I got to get this printed. Where am I going to get this printed? I don't know. So at the time, DC was at 75 Rockefeller Plaza, Mm-hmm. And in the basement, where I used to go, and they had the mail room, which I would go down there to, to mail stuff out. But they also had a huge printing press and print shop because they would print stuff for Warner Brothers and Warner Records and all this stuff, posters and all kinds of things. So I would I would you know, chat with the the guy that was the manager there, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was I, when I walked in there, I'm looking at go, yeah, you know. You know, the guy's name was Frank. Frank, can you guys print a book? He goes, yeah, sure. You know, can you print like, like a comic book, like you know, magazine-sized comic book? He goes, yeah, no problem. You know, I said, what would it cost? He goes, Give me three hundred dollars cash. You know, which was a lot of money back then. And of course, it was on on this really good paper, you mm-hmm. know, which is still is white. And I mean, this is like expensivo paper. Yeah. So, so basically, I gave Frank cash, and then mm-hmm. at night, 
he went and he you know, like gave him the old work, whatever, did everything, and he printed the book in the basement of Warner Brothers, Warner Communications. That's hysterical. And oh, by the way, his last name was Scorsese. <laughs> Any relation? This is his older brother, Martin's oh. older brother. Okay. I, I don't think Frank is, is, is with us anymore, but that was Marty's older brother. I met Marty a few times after that. I said, Marty, I said, how's Frank? Oh, he's doing good. Yeah. And I, and I actually went to a couple of parties with with Martin and, and his then lovely wife, uh, Isabella Rosalini. That's another story. But anyhow, so I just printed 10,000 copies printed. Wow, that's a, that's a nice and, run and for then, 300 bucks. Right. <laughs> And then, and then, it was uh, the beginnings of the um, direct sale comic book market, mm -hmm. which the guys doing it were like Phil Suling and Bud Plant, and maybe a couple other ones. So Phil and 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 Bud took majority of the the print run from me, mm -hmm. and uh, they got it distributed to comic book stores. And you know, newsstands. So, wow. so I don't know, a few weeks later, a monthly, whatever it was. I mean, I'm on 86th Street, passing a newsstand, and they've got copies of my book on the newsstand, along with you know the Warren magazines and DC Comics or whatever. Yeah. And surprisingly enough, Steve Borak, who used to run CBCS, but now he's working for, I think Heritage or something, or. He's worked for a, he worked for Heritage, but he told me that this was like one of the first comic books he ever bought as a kid. Really? So, so he, he's a fan of Astron. So. But yeah, so I sold a lot of these copies. Of course, then back then I didn't. I wanted to do another issue, but <clears throat> you know I was going to school too, and then I was working at DC, and then I I suspended college for a while but you know the money comes in and the money goes yes so you know so i didn't really get a chance to do another book until like 1980 when i kind of partnered up with the rich buckler who had done a lot done a lot of stuff but in the meantime um and this is a little this is another exclusive for you <laughs> okay so one of the uh, the guys who initially I wanted to see if I get a pinup from was Al Milgram. And he goes, I'm, not, I'm too busy now because Al was like working as an editor at DC. Mm -hmm. uh, too busy to do it. Oh, okay, okay, Al. Now, after I printed the book, I, I took, you know, I don't know how many copies. I I passed out copies to Mar the guys at Marvel and DC, you know, because yeah. I had this this really naive, stupid idea that, oh, maybe if I showed them this character and this book that I did, that maybe then they would hire me to, like, do something or at least uh, maybe I could sell the character to Marvel or DC. Yeah. You know, and everyone thought that was nice, but, you know, when you're in a company and you do something and they see you in a certain role mm -hmm. as assistant, you yeah. kind of like stay in that role. Yeah, yeah. So now one of the guys that I gave the the, the book to was Jerry Conway. Okay. Because he was that at the time. Yeah. It was all right. No one said anything. Now a year later, in 78, they come out with Firestorm. Mm -hmm. Now we can't show the cover of Firestorm 1 but it's very similar to the cover of this, the positioning of Firestorm. But the mm -hmm. most interesting thing was that um, Firestorm, it's the two guys, right? It's uh, yep. Professor, whatever his name Stein, is, and, Professor and Robbie, Stein. Robbie, whatever his name is. Yeah. And they, the nuclear explosion, and the two of them form into one being Firestorm, <laughs> which is interesting because then well, here's my book here, and it's the the two ships, let's see, this is a year earlier. Oh, I'm going to give you the screen again. Hold on. Okay, give it to you. Yeah. There you go. So we can okay. See the two ships collide <laughs> in space. There's wow. this big explosion in space. 
Mm -hmm. And then the two beings form into one. Astron wow. is these two beings. The mind yeah. of the Earth man is in the is also in the mind of this guy. The two minds at one. Mm -hmm. And then the next page is, you know, the astronaut James Hunt is talking to Astron, and notice the floating head of mm -hmm. James Hunt. So here's the so. Without Astron, you're saying we wouldn't have Firestorm. Uh, I'm not saying that. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to put words in I'm your mouth. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that all these comics are uh, an influence, a homage, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, without Superman, there'd be no Captain Marvel. Yeah. So it's kind of like a funny coincidence that, you know, but also it's a funny coincidence that the colors of... Firestorm and the look of them are kind of similar to Astron too, but that's okay. And at the time, I didn't make a big bitch about it because I was working at DC and I was hanging around with like Christopher Reeve and being on a set of Superman, so I really didn't really give a shit that much, yeah. you know. Plus, also, I think Firestorm lasted what like ten issues or something, or no, I don't. Remember. And it was like dead in the water at the time, so it's like, yeah. It was like, you know. I used to have the. I, I believe I had his run in the eighties. I don't think uh, I had his anything. Yeah, the original. I mean, the thing that's funny is like in the first issue of Firestorm, there are a couple of panels that look and dialogue that looks like it's taken from this. You know, but whatever. Hmm. But the bottom line is uh, now uh, the Firestorm fans look at Astron as like his like father or grandfather or something. You know, so, so it's okay. You know, hmm. both characters can coexist. Exactly. Everything everything in comics is influenced by something else. So I just think yeah. it's very funny, you know. Oh, absolutely. So anyhow, anyhow, Astron is back, so he'll be back doing his thing and So and let, let me let me ask you this. So when um when you created Astron. Now, yes. you have your whole I you, you told us the idea of the two ships crashing right, right. and everything. Right, now right. was was there a like was there a passion in you for sci-fi characters or are you just trying to do something that wasn't you know wasn't in the market or popular in the market at the time because i mean when you when you're in the 70s you're looking at more superheroes selling than than science fiction comics correct right well i was always kind of uh attracted to the sci-fi characters more than mm -hmm. a regular superhero. Yeah. W whether or not I just... I mean, I like superheroes, but I saw, saw it as... But, like, one of my favorite characters was the the Marvel Captain Marvel, especially after, uh, you know, Gil Kane retconned mm -hmm. it, and then um, Jim Starlin then made him like super cosmic. So those were like really influences. Yeah. You know, and uh and talking about influences and and, and, and borrowing, I suppose to a degree I borrowed the um the Captain Marvel uh Rick Jones thing, you know. Yeah, you know, when you were just when you mentioned Captain Marvel, that was one of the things that popped into my head. Yeah. Um, so I can't really like uh, accuse Jerry Conway or or Al Milgram of it. I mean, because I kind of did the same thing. So yeah. it's it's, no, it's listen, so fair it, and love and war. Yeah, I was gonna say. We, I mean, everything is influenced. I mean, I have. I don't know if I've talked on the show about it, but I I have I have a love of pulp comics and pulp books, and without you know um, uh, uh, John Carter from Mars, without Doc Savage, we wouldn't have Superman. You know, it's right. like you like those two are basically Superman. And right. uh, you and know, Batman so is a shadow. Exactly, everything is just taken from somewhere else, you know. Or, or what's your twist on it? So exactly, exactly. You know. So, so in any case, the um, <clears throat> you know, as far as far as Astron goes, yeah, I, I was uh, always attracted to the science fiction type character. Now, what's mm -hmm. interesting is that around the time I was doing this, then um, they were making there was. A movie was made um, called Star Wars, 
which was being filmed in seventy around the time I was making yeah. this book. Yeah. Star Wars. So I actually have a review of Star Wars in the book. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me give you the screens. Because I had a little text section and uh and uh so I reviewed some current movies. So there was Oh nice. Star Wars and then the just love me you know stuff like that. Yeah. So that's kind and, of interesting. And, so, and what was your review? Did you enjoy the movie? Oh of course I love both movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I compared Oh, and Wizards too, which is uh, Ralph Bakshi. So Wizards. Ralph Bakshi, great, great film. Uh, so, so, so uh, Star Wars. You know, I said so the influences of Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, and uh, mm. Forbidden Planet, and then you know, James Bond, of course. So, so yeah. it was just, uh, um, you know, we, uh, you know, I, 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 I hit all the marks there. So, yeah. so Astron is not a uh, post Star Wars. Um, character that got influenced by Star Wars, I was influenced by the same thing that George Lucas was that's... influenced by. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's, it it's hard ha to... Sorry, go ahead. Finish. finish with no, no, I, it's, so, it's not, so it's not a case of of, uh, you know, it's a case of you know, kind of the the the, uh, the heavens coming together at, at the same time where thinking yeah. about all the space shit, you know, going through. But, you know, but so I, I drew all this stuff before Star Wars came out, so yeah, it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, this, you know, this is neat. I'll review that Star Wars thing in here too, you know. Yeah, but uh, um, uh, actually, more of an influence uh, was uh, my my giant robot, the, the robot character, the Sentry, yeah, the Centurion, I, uh, is, uh, is yeah, influenced there is. by by uh, uh, some of the kids out there may not know the Japanese anime character from the seventies. Um, uh, Ray Dean, which later became one of the Shogun Warriors when they brought those over here. But uh, Ray Dean was a character that um, I knew about because there was a Japanese bookstore, which is still in business, Kino Kinusha. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. But they were on 57th Street and they sold the toys. Yeah. So they had all these like robot toys, which were cool. So my friend Brendan Faulkner and I was a director did spookies would go in and buy all this stuff so i had the the ray dean toy and ray dean used to show on television on saturday nights in spanish on channel 47 yeah so i would watch that show and then so, so it was you know, this guy's kind of influenced by ray dean yeah so so there yeah, no, I, I'm I'm trying to think because I I've heard of it. I don't know, and I'm sure I've seen images. I don't think I've ever seen. I seen I can't get up in the living room. I've got a little yeah. metal statue of yeah. Ray Dean, one of the few I still have. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, so he's uh, you know, he's one of the original Shogun Warriors. He's on the cover of the Shogun Warriors number one from Marvel. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, I sold the big plastic. A toy of him, which is going for like probably five hundred bucks now. Wow! But but I wouldn't have room for all this stuff anyway that I used to have. I I had all these toys that later became uh, uh, you know, Transformers or Voltas Five, all these big robots. And by the way, in the Philippines, they have a licensing deal, and they they've done a live action series on the Japanese robot series Voltas Five. Really, I wasn't so, aware. And I've seen clips from it. It looks great. But, you know, of course, this stuff is not available here. So, yeah. So I don't know. Unless you see clips on YouTube, that's about it. I, I spend a lot uh, of time on YouTube looking up, you know, foreign, uh, you know, um, television shows and stuff that people have told me about. So this will have to be something I'll, I'll ooh, look up. I just posted something which, which I found. Because, um, you know, the, the Koreans or whatever, they like to do knockoffs, you know, all these. So apparently in the late seventies or whatever, they did, the Koreans did their own anime and they did an animated version of Batman. Okay. So there's a, there's a, so I just posted it on my page, Thomas Sayaka. I'll have to look that up. It, it, it's the whole feature from YouTube and it's, except Batman. It looks like Batman, except he's got a yellow costume with 
and then he, he fires like bolts from his hands and flies. You know. <laughs> okay. So, 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 but, but, but it's Batman, but they don't call him Batman. They call him uh, Ogden Bat or, or Golden Bat, which is a ripoff of the Ogden Bat, Golden Bat character from Japan, which is a different character, but they, whatever. They, but so, so, yeah. so it's, it's a ripoff Batman character. So I have that on my page. So you, you guys can <laughs> I'll, find I'll, it. I'll check that out. But, I have someone who I want to who who's in the green room now, ready to come on the screen. Um, he's someone who you know you work with, someone who uh, who was integral in helping you get uh, get this, uh, I guess, the Kickstarter or the Astron book back up. Uh, let's bring on Ray Felix. In the car. Jesus. Hey, Ray. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, there he is. It's Ray. Ray, you look like you woke Ray. up. No, I've actually been doing grades for the last two hours. Oh, no uh, wonder that you look like that. Te- technically, almost all day. I started around lunchtime, and then I have like over 330 kids. So, wow. Oh, <laughs> that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a busy. Uh, yeah, a busy I started day. around 12 o'clock. And then I stopped around like two. Then I continued uh, around. Seven, and then I'm almost done. I'm on my last class. All right. Well, <laughs> let's uh, let's let's talk a little bit about Astron here. Uh, from Astron, from your point of view, uh, how did you get involved with uh, with Astron here? That's and- a good question. Um, I met Tom. What was that? Like ten years ago now, Tom? Eleven years ago? Um, yeah, probably about about ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, at the WinterCon with uh, Chris Duckett, the infamous Chris Duckett. You know, our buddy Chris, yeah. um, uh, we were sharing a table. And I remember Rodney Ramos was there. He was across from us. It was some fiasco. Oh, it was a fiasco there with Carbonaro. Basically, I paid for a table. Then Carbonaro tried to give me half table with Rodney. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't get a free table. You charged me. Yeah, X amount of dollars for a table. So I was like, Rodney, sorry, but you, you know, and he sat Rodney behind me, directly behind me, and then Chris was sitting with me. Yeah. I just that- want to take a moment. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to say hi to Dylan, who's been watching since the beginning. Hi, Dylan. Um, but uh, continue. So Rodney was behind you. Chris well, was next to you, and and then um, I think we we're still selling the Bronx Hero soda at that time. Yes, I and, bought uh, I bought the soda. So Tom comes to the table, I think because he saw heavy traffic with the arrow on the head and stuff, and he's like, oh, that looks like my character, blah, blah, blah. Would you guys do a pinup for me, blah, blah, blah. And we kind of hit it off. So, Am I right about that? I mean, you remember? Yeah, 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 pretty much. Tom has a sharper memory than I do, but <laughs> when it comes to, like, you know, like events and stuff like that. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, and then I think from there, um, Tom hired me to put together his Astron comic book, the, the magazine that he was showing you earlier. And then I, I shrank it down for a comic book format. Yeah, that was a reprint of the of the, the original book. So we did a reprint, book, so, yeah. a, a new cover, and and all that. So, yeah. so then 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 uh, Ray and I just started hanging out, and uh, we became and fast friends. Fast friends, yes, <laughs> fast friends, fast friends. And then we realized we were like it was, a, it was a bromance, a bromance, a, bro- a bromance. We, I saw. That I was Tom twenty years in the future, and he saw that I was him twenty years in the past. <laughs> exactly. So it was like ah. And plus, also our birthdays are very close. We're two Sagittarians. Yeah, two Sagittarians. <laughs> so, so, so we we had the Sagittarian. Uh, how, how the Sagittarians can annoy people. That's what we do. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, so so from there on, the legend continued. And like, the legend uh, continues, like the Zorro know. and the son of Zorro. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, so Ray helps me with my projects. I help him with his projects, uh, consulting him, whatever. We bounce stuff off of each other, you know, yeah. and then uh, go to uh, collaborate. And, we collaborate. And, a- and Astron is making a guest appearance in. Uh, world without superheroes. Yeah, that'll right. be the after the Kickstarter is out on my book. Yeah, Astron is is has made a guest appearance, guest issue of World Without Superheroes, and also three issues. The two of us came up with a psychotic uh, idea of mm-hmm. of 
sticking Astron in the Old West along with a couple of <laughs> Ray's Western characters. Yeah. You okay so, there, Ray? No, you know, when you work with, <coughs> when you work with kids, you know, just... Uh, They're germy little things. Yeah, yeah, you get better, you get sick, you get better, you get sick, you get better, back and forth. Like, you know, yeah. like I had red eye last week, then I got better, then I got red eye again yesterday. I'm just like... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Like, uh, back you had to put a bubble over your head. Summer's well. coming soon, man. Just yeah. remember, you got, what, <laughs> le- about a month left to school. Yeah, well, le- uh, yeah, about a month, yeah. Because uh, I have a surgery coming up on the fifteenth of June, so I, I actually end school six days before everybody else. Wow! But I'll be laid up in a cast, summer in a cast. It'll be my first cast on my leg ever because I never broke a bone aside from my uh, wrist when I was uh, like maybe six years ago. But I actually like lived my life without ever breaking real bones. I mean, I had hairline fractures like collarbone as a kid, spine, you know, hairline fractures in the spine, cracked my skull open, but. No major breaks, you know. So cracking your skull open, no major breaks. I understand. Yeah, that's just a flesh <laughs> wound. You know? flesh, but I flesh just want to say hi to Mike Wilkie in the audience. Hi, Mike. Thanks for tuning so, in. So Astron is going to be in a world without superheroes. I was working on a <coughs> on a volume two, number one. That was like, actually, that was like 2012 already, Tom. Can you believe that? Oh, God. So <laughs> <laughs> the book was just about done and he was like hey why don't you throw Astron in there <laughs> I was like, okay so I actually had done some pinups for Astron uh, when I first met Tom some of them that he didn't use so I went back and one of them was like a redesign like a concept c- costume that I had come up with, and I was like, oh, let's use this. And then I ended up drawing, <coughs> I threw the pin up in there at the very end, and then I added a page, a page or two, I don't remember, uh, like with dialogue. So I kind of like inserted them in the, into the War Without Superhero story, almost as like a, a tangent, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a beeline story, like a sub, subplot within yeah. the main plot, which, was really interesting because the War Without Superheroes has been in my brain for 28 years. I've been putting this book together. It's it's almost like a, a an infinite puzzle that never ends, you know. Like, and I just wish, like, you know, like like, like this thing, you know. It's like it never ends, you know. It's you're always finding like some new facet. Like every time I sleep, I always find a new story in my brain that I need to draw. So it's one of those stories that never really. Uh, ended you know so it's just like it just continues and then it just changes shape and what is that i can't even see what that is i'm gonna give you the screen for this is a it's a puzzle box oh okay from hellraiser (laughs) (laughs) so 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 the, the story with astron actually just kept changing form and changing and 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 then finally uh you know yeah we got like all together. It's going to be four issues. The first one came out in 2012. I, I wrote the story before the pandemic, but then I, you know, I'm working on so many different projects. I always I bounce back and forth. So then during the lockdown, we finished it. So I was working on Punchline and I was working on this stuff. So and then we basically finished it. I just got to sit down and color it. That's going to take forever, you know. But uh. I think 2024, it'll be out. The because I wanted to release it as a graphic novel instead of individual issues. Even though I, yeah. the first part was already individual issues, um, I just feel like individual issues are a slow seller these days. People usually pick up. Gra- it depends on the show, but sometimes you know the floppies, which I hate calling them that, but because floppies is a disc. But you know, but as they call them floppies now, the individual comics, the funny books. Like how they called it when I was a kid. The funny books used to sell fast, but now they sell slower because, you know, you got a graphic novel, which is about $20, right? Because it's four issues. And then you got a single issue, which is about five bucks, right? Yeah. Uh, And then the printing cost is getting higher and higher. So you're not really making any money printing a single book. So most people, if you look at most indies, they're selling their single books between seven and $10 now. Mm-hmm. Because what used to cost a dollar twenty-five per per printed issue, 
is now the the the, the small press is actually charging you the same price it costs for an actual comic book to print your book per book. Like their prices are yeah. outrageous. You're paying for about three to four dollars per issue. You're not really making a profit selling yeah. it at five. So it makes it's more economical to actually do the graphic novel because it ends up making. But I also think people hear the term graphic novel these days, and it's yeah, it's one a, of those well, it's a buzzword it is, for yeah. and and it makes it more legitimate of literature than if you're reading a comic book. Uh, right. But it's really a trade paperback. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's what it is. Yeah, it's a trade paperback. They just everyone everything's a graphic novel though. But it's just like. <sighs> But, you know, I think, you know, we're never too old to learn. Tom and I are always learning new things together by exploring the past. Yeah. Exploring the history of comics, like Westerns and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and I just got, um, I'm just fascinated by the whole genre of comics, you know. Well, I've always said to me it's the greatest uh, genre because all you need is your imagination and skill with a pencil. If you could draw exactly. it, you can go there. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's about telling stories and you know, exactly you know, just just sequential panels. There, it's a it's a fun thing. I mean, I was working on stuff earlier today, uh, and I I, I think you know, even though I love animation and I love to animate, I think my most fun might be what I'm sitting there working on my comics. Yeah. You know, I think I, there's just something about, there's an excitement that I get in me. Um, and I, you know, I don't have anything next to me to show. Otherwise I would have pu- pulled out a few things, but <laughs> it's, uh, I was doing tons and tons of sketches uh, today before I, I went on my, uh, I, I started my day job and then on my lunch hour, I was drawing as well. It's, a lot of cool stuff. A lot. Uh, actually, I have an Astron picture because I knew you were coming on tonight. I wish I uh, <laughs> I moved it to the side. I gotta I gotta find it. Maybe I'll see if I can get it before we end the show. Yeah. Um, so you did a you did a you did a pit up. I did. Well, it's a little sketch. I mean, I keep my sketch pad next to me. This is this is a, a villain's the head of a villain from one of my characters I'm working on. Um, before it's odd. Cool. Yeah. So I was just like, uh, I mean, that was what I was doing when I punched out of work. Well, actually, here's something. This is just a loose thing I was working on today. Is that the um, peanuts? Is that a peanuts pillow behind you? I, it's a peanuts blanket. I got it for Christmas. Oh, nice. my pillow behind me that's helped me with my back is a Lord of the Rings uh, uh-huh. pillow. But um, so this, I know it's hard to see right here, but I was laying out a page, and it the, the idea is. On the first, I, I was trying to make it a one-page story so I can go into the rest. Mm. I wanted to basically tell the guy's origin, and he's, you know, he's a sci-fi hero like Tom. I'm a big sci-fi fan, and he fly. You know, I wanted him flying through space, but I wanted his jet stream to kind of be the panel breakup. That was what I was kind of cool. playing with. But I don't. I think I'm gonna have to make it two pages to tell his story. Um, I always wanted Bruce Tim to do an Astron animated series of he. Right. That would be my that would be my dream. Maybe we can maybe we can draw it in his style if we can. Uh, I right, could definitely exactly. uh, I could definitely do an Astron in his style for you. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so um, uh, uh, who's it? Dil- oh, Dylan asked his name. I you know what? I don't remember his name. Uh, my friend wrote the comic for me based on characters of mine. My friend Don Smith, who's been on the show before, and. Uh, it follows a trio of of heroes. One is a Native American, like mystic. Um, the other is a blind kind of like I don't want to call him Daredevil, but he's almost like a blind Nightwing. And let's say that. And then the other one is kind of like my version of Captain America. You know. There you go. Um, so it's a trio of heroes. Like but he's like this German resurrected. Uh, evil villain from the past or a descendant. I forgot what he was. Now. Why is it always the Germans? I didn't write the script. My friend did. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always the Germans. It's, oh, oh, actually, you know what? No, no, no. It's Russian because his. his okay, that's better. He goes by uh, he goes by Czar something. That's I that's don't better. Remember that's now. better. Yeah, Russian. Yeah, actually, it's... actually, the best thing that ever happened for movies right now is 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 Vladimir Putin because now <laughs> we can make the Russians bad guys again. It's like for a while, I was like, who can the bad guys be? We can't really blame it went from the, the Arabs back because back it's back. like not all of them are bad. It's like, but now ah, good, the Russians now good. Okay, so now every TV show now has the Russians as the bad guys. Yeah. So ah, good. It's just like the good old fifty. Just the like commies. the good old days, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like good old days, but ah, those commies. You know? Back in the saddle again. So 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 the Cold War ending was like the worst thing for entertainment. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, so we, we, spy we, movies. So now know. let's see now if the Russians are the bad guys in the next James Bond film. You know. Yeah. Well, um, you, know, you had all those um, like you had uh, these uh, East what was it Berlin villains uh, and that that movie what was it called with uh, Charlie Theron in the eighties? You know, with the Buffalo oh Atomic War. Blonde. Atomic Blonde. Yeah. Atomic was, Blonde. Yeah, that was, but that was taking place during. It was still before the wall fell down, so they still were commies. They were still commies. They were yeah. still commies. Yeah. So that was that was taken. That was pre nineteen eighty nine. So it was still commies or bad guys. And then the ending was very confusing, where she went at being from a double agent to a triple agent. You're like, okay, this right. is it. somebody well, somebody's suppo- brain exploded with this ending. <laughs> so, like, well, I, I like that movie, but. Supposedly they were they're, they're supposed to do a sequel, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that was a pretty good movie, you know. I yeah. like Charlize Theron. They She's should good. have just called it uh, Black Widow. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Appar- apparently, she's in the new uh, Fast and Furious movie, which yeah, I I will, will skip. Apparently, it's, it's pretty bad. I yeah. I did see the last one, number nine. Well, those so. movies are terrible, but they're unwatchable. Yeah, well, the, I think the last one I actually saw was number eight, and that, and they had me where the car goes from one high rise skyscraper to the other. Yeah, right. well, Jason that, that, new they, they kind of lost me with that one, you know. Yeah, yeah Jason uh, Momo is the villain for the new for the new version. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll, I'll wait till it comes on cable or something or Netflix or whatever. Yeah, I wait is. for for stuff. I mean, heck, I still I, I still haven't seen. The new Ant Man movie. Haven't seen the new Black Panther movie. Haven't seen. Um, oh, what's going on? I didn't get a chance to see the Super Mario Brothers movie, which is now you can pay for on digital. I haven't seen the Dungeons and Dragons movie, which is now available on Paramount. You know, right. it's so it's like, why even go to the movies if if like three months later or not even three months later, it's going to be on digital. Well, this is this is the whole problem with the theatrical now is that yeah. they're, they're dumping the stuff out after two months. It's like, why bother to go pay 12, 15 bucks to see it when you can see it on TV later? I know. It's just the, yeah. You know, that's why, that's why I haven't seen, uh, you know, I, I have Paramount Plus, so I will see the Dungeons and Dragons. But that kind of, I heard that that got very good reviews, but that kind of like vanished because it came out around the same time as what uh, there was some other movie that came out that oh the, the the Mario Brothers came out so that that that, that took that, that was like the big surprise hit is the Mario Brothers so yeah no I'm really interested in that one just because I'm such a huge Mario fan um I mean you guys I don't know if you've seen it before but right behind me I got my big Mario <coughs> figure on the wall I got some good Mario comics you know. So you have Nintendo Power number one? No, I do not. I had that. Uh, I had all the first. I think the first year of those magazines. And when I when I moved out to Baltimore, when I left home, I dumped them in the trash. And I heard that that magazine, I think, was number one, is worth a hundred thousand dollars now, graded. Really? Oh God! I was fucking pissed. <laughs> I was like. And then what's funny is that about ten years ago, there was I was buying a collection, and they had all the Nintendo Power magazines, and I was like, I used to have those. I don't want them. It's like, <laughs> it like Wizard magazine, you know. That's yeah. before Wizard magazine. And uh, and someone graded one nine point nine, and it's fucking a hundred grand. I was like, what the fuck? 
Well, well, they're coming out with you know, they're doing all the reprints of, of of comics now, which is a big thing now. Yeah. So apparently, they're doing a reprint of uh, of oh, there, that's the astronaut. I was just doing this now while we we're talking. Oh, nice. Yeah. So uh, the, apparently, they're doing a reprint of the Omega Men number five, which is the yeah. first appearance of Lobo. Oh, really? And apparently, that's going for like two hundred fifty dollars. And I know I had that issue, right? Somewhere, but I probably dumped it out when I was selling a ton of comics when I was moving. So I probably, you know, let it go in a pile of comics. I, I was selling books in, in my basement, you know, buy, buy the bin full, like $100 a bin. They just dump everything in the bin and take it because I had to get rid of stuff. So God only knows what that's worth. Right? But, but who knows? I may still have it. But that's $250. Yeah, it sucks. But the, well, could have been. Down, down. Well, you know, most of the books that I got rid of, my collections and stuff, when I when I first moved out from home, I never thought I'd be the guy that get dumped my comics. But I, I mean, I I just didn't have the space to carry them. I had one trunk, and that was my Marvels, and I I took my Marvels, but all my DC, most of my DCs, I gave away. You know, like because I couldn't couldn't leave it in the house. My brother was gonna steal them anyway, so I decided to give them away. And then I gave them, I gave away like my whole collection of GI Joes, Akira, Superman, like John Byrne, Superman. A bunch I of gotta books. say, I'm I'm upset. I gave away my GI Joes. I had a lot of those are great comics, actually. Yeah. I mean, you, you can easily get them back. I found a few issues. I've seen them in dollar box bins, and I've I've gotten the key issues that were my favorites. And yeah. then I even got Mike Zek and Larry Hammer to sign them. You know. So. Well, unfortunately, you, you can't keep everything, especially like if you're moving. Like so I moved from the condo to a one bedroom and you know i can't put a basement full of books right. into i mean as it is now i have two friggin storage units of stuff which i'm slowly selling yeah uh, and i got rid of a lot of books but you know, it would it would have to have been like at one point I had, at one point i had three storage units so so wow. it's like you know there's a lot of shit owning you for, for 50 years, you know, there's a lot of stuff you collect. So, I mean, I couldn't keep all those books. I mean, I sold a lot of books. I mean, yeah, who knew? Who knew 10 who years knew? later or eight years later that, that the price would skyrocket on this shit? Yeah. You know? yeah. So, no, whatever. I know. It's, it's, it is what I mean. Listen, I had 30 comic boxes before I got married. I got it down to something like, I think 16 boxes when I got married and I'm down to six boxes now. No. Right. So you yeah. Sell it all or you just trash? No, it? I, well, I, there was a, there was a thing in um, Jersey called superheroes for hospice. And, oh yeah. That's uh that's uh that's Spiro. Yeah. Spiro's show there, which he doesn't yeah, do yeah. anymore because he no longer works for the company. But right. Right. He I just was from them. donated a bunch of books all the time. And then there were a few I sold. There's only, you know, I got to say, besides the G.I. Joe, there's truly one thing I feel bad I sold. And that was um, a lot of the DC, like, animated universe books. Right. I really enjoyed those. And, <laughs> and the fool in me forgot to take out the most expensive one. And for what oh, I got. Harley Quinn. Back yeah, there, I forgot yeah. to take that out. Um Thinking I, think that I had I, that one too. I think I, that's one of the ones I gave away. Yeah, and <laughs> so the amount of money I sold the books for was the value of that one book. Oh. Right? And I probably had, you know, between and that book was what seven eight hundred dollars at the time I sold it. Uh, Thousand bucks now. Yeah, so I got a, I got, I got seven hundred dollars for like maybe five six hundred comics, and there were probably a couple of others that were like $20, $30 books in there. So I was like, I don't care. Just give me the money, get it out of the house. But when I realized I forgot to take out that one book, mm. I was pissed because that was the value of, of the entire collection. Uh, right. collection there, you know? Someone so, got it. Yeah, so. Right. Well, I, I, I sold, I had like like runs of like Spider-Man from like number like five on. I sold all that stuff when I moved. It was like, yeah. You know, it's Fantastic Four. I didn't have as many as Fantastic Four, but I had the two 
the three key friggin' books, the mm -hmm. Galactus trilogy. I oh, really? Those, I mean, I mean, cheap. I mean, maybe I sold them for like, you know, like, like 30, 40 bucks each at the time, 10 years ago. Really? They weren't, they weren't in mint shape, but they weren't worth that much back then. Now, now that stuff is, I mean, I had all the Neil Adams Batman issues gone. Yeah. You know, and then I had I runs of Superman from the 50s until the 70s gone. Now all that stuff is <laughs> like, what can you do? Yeah. But we're talking about Astron now. And that's what I was going to get us back to in a second. Um, yeah. Astron. Here I am drawing, about Astron. drawing your Astron. Yeah, I mean, do you ever think about doing a porn of Astron? A what? <laughs> Ray, stop. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Rake would always go into the gutter when you. Uh... Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> no, but but getting back to Astron there. So joking. the story of Astron. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, think, I want. I want. I want to get back to. It, so <laughs> so uh, let's get back to the. Uh, so the original story of Astron. I had. I didn't really have a. I mean, he he. he the first story ends with him battling the uh, <laughs> giant robot in Times Square. Okay. And, you know, there's a, there's a battle on top of the, at the time, the Pan Am building, you know, where he, uh, you know, and then, of course, then he blows up the robot and all the debris fall and, you know, like an innocent person gets killed and he feels very guilty, you know, and, and it's the whole thing where, you know. <laughs> Hold on, let me give you the screen here. Give me a screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, I keep coughing. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Uh, so then, you know, Astron saves the city, whatever, but he kills a, a, an innocent bystander that gets killed. Oh. So one of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the bystanders, the, the, the boyfriend of the girl, Julie, says, Get away, you damn dirty alien. You've done nothing. You've done enough to ruin my life. He said, we don't need your help. You can save a city, but what life to you is meaningless. And Astrid walks into the distance. And the humans viewing him with hateful eyes do not see that even an alien can cry. Oh, wow. That was, that was the first. So I, I, even then I had this kind of like tragic kind of... Thing going on with Astra that he's got all these all powerful weapons or whatever, but you know, there's there's a which is something which they haven't really um, touched on in all these Marvel movies that there's a negative side to all these powers. Yeah, there's a negative side to these guys, you know, blowing up fucking cities or whatever. I mean, I've got you know Times Square. Getting blown up or whatever there, but people die. So who do they blame? They blame Astron because hey, yeah. you know, if it wasn't for you, because he's blue, because he's blue. <laughs> yeah, you know. And then then I then the, the follow up story is, you know, uh, was written by uh, Len Rosenberg, who was a science fiction writer, and uh, it was a good friend who was passed away, and it's kind of a background on Astron, but basically Astron is a cyborg. So he also is probably the first uh, uh, non-binary hero because he basically doesn't have uh, have have those uh, sex organs that you need. So so he still can love, but he just can't do the deed. So, but, uh, Talking about non-binary characters, oh. I just read that book, uh, Gender Queer, yesterday because I've sort of those, it's on the cancel list. And you know, I've always say, I always say, oh, there's only two genders. But after reading that book, I'm just like, well, I get it now. You know, okay. I, I think other people, I think people need to be happy, and, and representation is important. So right, exactly. Educated, <laughs> educated by a graphic novel. Educated, yes, exactly. Educated. But anyhow, anyway, let's get back, back to Astron. Yeah, back, get back to Astron there. Okay, so, so I don't have a copy of the Galaxia, but you know, Buck <laughs> and I did uh, after I. Decided to leave DC, go back to college. Buckler and I did. Mm -hmm. Decided to do our own magazine. We were hoping to create a uh, a publishing empire, which less mm -hmm. than one issue. <laughs> we did Galaxia. Uh, isn't that the way it always is? <laughs> <laughs> less than one issue. 
But we did we did Galaxia number one, and with his Astron story in it, and Buckler kind of like his influence. We kind of fleshed out the whole Astron story, so we went into a whole thing where uh, um, uh, Astron's home planet Zena is taken over by uh, the evil empire, which is the Shadar. And uh, they're basically like uh, like the Cylons or whatever, except they're, they're not robots. But the, the, the giant robots are like their centurions. So, And uh, they basically decimate uh, Zena and take it over. <laughs> so uh, Astron has to free um, his planet. Because it so that would have been starting in the third story, which would have been in Galaxia number two, mm-hmm. which was supposed to be published by Archie, which didn't ha- happen. They announced it. We did the story, and you know it didn't. It didn't happen. Did, but, did you ever? Did you ever call uh, Archie to find out about those missing pages? They don't have. They don't, have it. they don't know anything. They have no idea. They don't care. Mm. They don't care. They don't know. They don't know anything. They, 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 it's, I have a feeling that what happened was I love Rich Buckler he's, he passed away but Rich was a little at that time was uh, he was kind of like uh, became like a, like a Jesus freak or whatever because that was the time when he almost got killed in a car accident and so, 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 so he was also running a comic book shop in Staten Island at the time and <coughs> And supposedly, the artwork was stolen, but I have a feeling that he sold it, so, <laughs> which is probably what happened to the. Didn't some to, of it resurface recently? That you saw someone selling it or something? Some, some, some a page resurfaced recently, but the guy never answered me back. I made a copy off the net of uh, this one page, but I don't know what. Who knows? But, but, uh, but in any case, I had some original pencils which were. Re- Later redrawn by Buckler for right. Galaxia Two, so and then I had layouts and what from what I remembered, so I reconstructed the story that Tom Hearn inked, which is going to be in the Volume One of Astron Star Soldier, which is the Kickstarter starting soon, and that story is 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 in, in Volume One, and then the, the story continued for another hundred pages because mm. that's what we did. During COVID, it was finished this this epic. Now, how many how many pages is Volume One going to be? Uh, it will be probably <coughs> closer to eighty pages. Okay. So it's going to be all the stuff from Astro Comics One and Galaxia One, and then the pages that were done for Galaxia Two, which never saw print, and then <laughs> uh, a little beyond that, and then there'll be pinups and stuff because I have pinups galore by various people, you know, Joe mm-hmm. Staten, whatever. Uh, so there'll be pinups there. And then there'll be some uh um you know I ha- I have some of the original ads that I had which I had um put in ads for the book in like buyer's guide and whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh from then and there'll be other other little surprises um you know, that 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 page at Perez Inked, you know, and then I have another page that has the Battalion, which was another comic book that Perez and I were going to do with our other heroes that um, Astron's in that. So I'll be printing that, and um, there'll be other surprises in there, all kinds of unseen things and and stuff that uh, that will excite people. Now we are you kicking know. around the idea of a of a Astron manga, but that's still still in the works. Still, yeah. just- oh, the other thing I, I I did do, which I haven't shown, I because I no longer have the original story that George and I did in nineteen sixty nine seventy during COVID. I kind of recreated it, so I actually I I should have done it on on regular typing paper. I should have done it on Bristol, but. I did it on, I wanted to do it exactly the same way that the original was done. So I drew it on, on basically typing paper with a flare pen. So I basically mm-hmm. redrew the original 18 page story. Okay. So that will see print too. Uh, and it looks more like uh, Hanna-Barbera animation. Mm-hmm. You know, 
So I do have that in a folder. I have it all pages protected in plastic. And so that will. <coughs> it's be colored see, like those black cartoons like Hanna Barbera, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it will see print in mm -hmm. one of the volumes because what's coming out on the Kickstarter is only volume one. So it either will be two or three volumes, depending on how it goes. And this Friday is your official launch, right? This Friday. Uh, I think I'm going to switch it to Monday. It's a Monday. Okay. I'm going to switch okay. it to Monday. But I, I, I'm, I'm going to. One of the things I'm going to be sending out, like a, an eBay, uh, eBay, an email blast, but also I'm going to talk to a couple of my friends mm -hmm. who are unnamed now, but that run conventions and ask them to do me a favor and just do an e email blast for me with right. all their connections at their convention people. So, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to really do this professionally mm -hmm. um, and maybe get some, some, uh, Coverage maybe in Bleeding Cool or a couple of these CBR, a couple of these things, you know. Yeah, because they, they did they did uh, talk about the Trump land book, the Return of Astron. Right, CBR did do the Return of Astron. Yes, they did do a, an article yeah. on Bleeding Cool. So maybe I can get them to do uh, another one on this book, and then Money maybe some the local press or something. I don't know. Yeah, you know, maybe exactly. the newspaper or 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 whatnot. You know, uh, maybe some of the Bronx papers or something, or or. Uh, what have you, but uh, definitely try to try to use our publicity acumen that we've done so many times before with all your your shows at the Po Cottage, you know. Yeah, yeah. All, all, all the all yeah. the uh, the uh, the publicity that we've yeah. learned from that. We need to have an Astron Park in the Bronx, you know, like. <laughs> Yeah, that would be that would be by Cardinal Hayes. Tom Siak away, you know. Tom Siak away, yes, exactly. We'll, yeah. we'll do one of those. Well, there's a Stan Lee Street now and a Bill Finger Street. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, we should get a George Perez Street too. That's it. We can make all that happen. We can make that happen. Yeah, we, I know the. We, I know the guys that are behind that whole sign thing. I haven't been in touch with them of, of late, but um, uh, Julian was actually working on getting uh, somebody a sign recently. I forgot who it was. Another comic book person and they're actually working on that. I mean they got one for 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 um Yellow Benji who was the subject of the graphic novel uh, Ghetto Brother. Right. So they got exactly. the Yellow Benji after the Stanley sign they they got a sign for Yellow Benji for what he, his activism in the Bronx and stuff. And then right. they, made, they made a mural in his memory, you know, after he passed away. <laughs> you know, it was like 8 years ago now. Time is just flying by so quickly; it's scary. I know. How many years ago was the Bill Finger thing that we there? We were there with. Uh, oh, that's like name. Uh, six years ago already. How many years? Five or six years ago. That was the same day that I was. I think that was the same day I was filming Comic Book Man, or I was going to a convention. I forgot where it was going, but. That was the Bill Finger. That was where. Uh, what's his name? The, uh, was there and the, the 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 Batman voiceover guy came. Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. His name? Kevin Quick. Conroy. Kevin Conroy showed up. Yeah, he was we're there, there, and it's like, oh, it's it's uh, freaking Batman there. showed up on but his he, own on his yeah. own like uh, two dollars and fifty cents on the subway. He showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and he wasn't paid or anything. He just showed up. He wanted to be there, and yeah, know, he hung out with everybody. It was pretty cool. He was a cool guy. Well, yeah. he was he's a he was a true New Yorker. He loved. Yeah. He loved it. He was Batman. And his, and his grandmother, he said he spent a lot of time in the Bronx with his grandmother when he was younger. So his grandmother. Yeah, so, so he knew the name. Of it. And that was a very cool day, you know. Hey, it was. Batman. It was a very cool day. Yeah, yeah that was 2018, I believe, or 2016 was that. Jeez. It had to be 2016, I think. Yeah, it was a while. Was, uh, it was, and it was a really cold freaking day, too. Oh, my God, it was cold. It's it was a really, really cold day. Yes. Yeah. yeah so there's a lot of people. A lot of people representing there. You know, um, the, Danny Fingeroth was there too. Uh, quite a few people. And then the guy who was responsible for a lot of it, Richie Torres, was a councilman. And now, <laughs> he's, now he's a congressman from the Bronx. That's right. Richie so Torres is there, and he was just Richie recently on, on TV. That's right. He was on Bill Maher. So he's, Bill Maher. He was he's, on Bill Maher. He's a good guy. He's he's, a, he's he's become a big guy now. So, you know. Yeah. Humble beginnings, all in the Bronx. 
That's right. But, no. <laughs> well, you know, but, here I mean, we, but we're here to talk about Astron Star Soldier, damn it. Yeah, we are. Astron yeah. Star Soldier. Here. Here. See this? <laughs> Hold on. Let and me give the screen again. Give me the screen again. And yeah, go I'll for show it. You, I, guys, I want to show you the well, Garcia show Lopez. Where's the Garcia it? Where's Lopez. Jeez, that's Garcia amazing. Lopez pin up. Mm -hmm. This is on... on uh, if you look, if you look this pit up up on Google, it's the only non DC character that Garcia Lopez ever drew for like forty years. Wow! Wow! Because you should you should uh, get 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 the rights for that so that you can make T shirts of that. That's really I have cool. rights for it. I own it. I know you own the chart. I mean, you should you know, you should pay him. I own the artwork. Yeah. I own it. This is mine. Yeah. Do you own the it's original? Yeah. What? I got the original artwork. Just I know. Down. She, she gave him a little kickbacks and, and then start selling shirts, you know? Yeah, I'll send him a check. <laughs> right over here. I'll send yeah. him a check. He, 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 probably, he probably won't even care. You know, yeah. I'm just looking through his book here. What a great book this is. What yeah. a great book this is. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to have to split. Make sure you plug in the Trump land book there with the... Uh... Ask oh, Trumpland! That's right. Well, tr the Trumpland book is one of the rewards. On mm -hmm. the uh, let's talk about some of the rewards. I have yeah, various okay, rewards. Okay. We have the graphic novel, which is uh, I'm gonna, gonna be twenty five dollars. And then uh, uh, you gotta take off, Ray. I take off. All right, Ray. All right, we'll see you soon. Have a good night. Bye. Okay, right. pal. Bye. Talk to you later. Okay, now that he's gone, now we can have some fun. Now we're gonna have some fun. No, so, so some of the rewards is gonna be uh let's see, we're gonna do the uh the graphic novel. There's also the PDF file for five dollars, graphic novel, and then we're gonna have the graphic novel, and I have some copies left over of Galaxia One autograph. So you get an actual copy from nineteen eighty one of Galaxia One wow. with the, the new novel. And then I'm gonna do a reprint, a, a replica edition of Astro Comics number one, Ooh. so that would that, that would be another. So it'd be that and the graphic novel, and then I'm gonna have another one where, you know, with you'll get a sketch, so you'll there. get a, a a sketch of Astron by me, a original piece of artwork, and then uh, let's see, another one where it'll be we're gonna sell one of the original, one of the original pages from the book. And then uh, what else are we going to have? Uh, oh, then you'll have another one where you get uh, the Trump land with the graphic novel. So we'll have a bunch of, of, of different things. And, uh, and then, uh, um, you know, it, 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 it'll be a lot of fun. I'm not going overboard with, because I've seen some of these campaigns where they have like, like fifty different rewards, you know. I I, you know, I or, say or, keep it simple. Exactly. I mean, it's like I was thinking of maybe. Well, maybe we could do a couple of, uh, um, you know, variant covers or whatever. But after what, it gets ridiculous. Yeah. Do you have any? Uh, are you gonna have digital tiers? Like uh, digital tiers. Yeah, meaning the book digital a digital copy of the book available, or is this yeah 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 okay you're gonna have no no Wait. no no no. no, no, no. The first, the first reward is, is is a PDF. Is a PDF, All right. Uh, and, and, and then they have it, you know, then you have it with the book and a PDF, you know. Okay. Cool, cool. You know, so so you get the PDF. You want, if you're a digital person, you can just get the digital. Yeah. That's fine. Um, you know? for those in the audience, in case you haven't clicked on the Kickstarter, this is what you what it's going to look like right now, and it'll just you'll get a uh, um. Like I have it saved here, so I will get notified when um, when this goes live. What I'm going to do is, even though I pasted the link earlier, I'm just going to paste the link again for all of you. Um, for some reason, occasionally I have an issue with it going up on Twitch. It seemed to work this time. Uh, if there is an issue with the link, just go to kickstarter.com and type in Astron, and you will find this page. Astron Star Soldier. Yeah. Well, Astron Sol Star Soldier is a full title, but it's the only thing in there named Astron. So if you just oh, okay, type yeah. in Astron well, for the search, it'll right. it'll come up. Um, so yeah, no, no, this is this 
I, I got to say, I have never read Astron, but I've seen you draw it. I've seen the artwork of it. And design-wise, I am a huge fan. I'm a big science fiction fan. I will tell you right now, and I think I've told you before, if you need a pinup, you need a few pages, you know who to come to. Um, no I'm, problem. I'm very by the happy. Way, the, by the way, the illustration you, you're showing here, that mm -hmm. is... Uh, that was supposed to be a cover for the Galaxia number two. Mm -hmm. And so the original layout is by Rich Buckler. And then I used that layout and tightened it. And then um, our good friend Tom Ahern did the inking. Mm -hmm. So that is, um, <clears throat> that will be the cover of the first volume. And mm -hmm. it, it is in color. It, yeah. It's not showing now, but there, there's, one of the, the other tiers that shows it in color. That's awesome. Uh, but but uh, that will be the cover of the book, which yeah. was supposed to be the original cover of Galaxia number two. Back Tom's in an amazing anchor. I love I love Tom. Uh, Hearn, yes, yes, yeah. he is absolutely. Tom's a great anchor. But uh, in any case, uh, that's um, that's what that's all we can show now because it's not yeah. live yet. But when this is live, I will be sharing. It. I, I appreciate it. That, uh, yeah. And I have a, a bunch of people already who are who are fans who are ready to help, like Riff, Rick Offenberger, who is involved with the uh, the Eisner Awards in mm. San Diego. But he's a fan, and he's been asking mm -hmm. me when this is coming out because he's a big fan of the uh, the Archie Mighty Crusaders. I love those does, characters too. Yeah, he does the uh, the uh, the shield. Uh, G-Men, which is kind of like a homage comic book. Uh, is that the book. the fanzine that they do? Yeah, it's like a fanzine, but it's a comic book too. He's got Dan, he's got, but he publishes a bunch of things. I'm going to stop my share real quick because I think I have a digital copy. Does he sell them on like Indie Planet? Yes, know? yes, he does. So I actually think I have some of those. And um, let me just see. I just want to see them if they're what I think they are. Because they are fantastic books. Um, yeah, so he's a fan. So he's he's already shared uh, my my uh, initial uh, uh, thing already. So so these guys are uh, because he's aware of the fact that Galaxia was supposed to be part of the whole Archie Heroes thing. It would have been somehow incorporated in with all those guys. Let me see. I just want to share the screen. You tell me if. This is one of the things I found uh, just quickly. Is this their stuff? This is a who's who. Yes. Of it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I just, love, I love these books. This is, this is uh, among the many things that, uh, that Rick yeah. does. He's a nice guy. Yeah. No, no. He's it's, also it's, involved with the Eisner awards. So who knows? Maybe yeah. Astron will get an Eisner award. That'd be amazing and fantastic. But anyhow, yeah, he does. He does a, a, a he does a lot of nice stuff. Rick, I think, is a, is a writer, but he has Dan Reed, who used to, who was a really good artist. Does a lot of, these guys are all involved with the stuff that they, they they do great stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and then you know, I, have, I have some other people. So I know a lot of people. Oh, I know a lot you, of people. You, you, so, you always so, have fun so. uh, fun stories. Yeah, so I'm trying to think of any other stories. Do I have any other stories to tell you? Let's see. Oh, if you do, I'd love to. I'd love to hear them. Where were we before Rain interrupted us? Rain inter well, we were so, talking about Astron. Astron. Uh, okay, so and, and so uh, um, so yeah. So then after uh, you know, then then Buckler and I did the uh, the Galaxia, the Galaxia thing, mm -hmm. and uh, and we sold a bunch of copies of that, but then. You know, again, it is it, a matter of this is going back to the early '80s, so getting the financing for this stuff, mm -hmm. and 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 it's not like today. So we couldn't do Kickstarter. We can't. So we just have to come up with the scratch. And then at the same time, he's he's also doing his stuff for DC and Marvel. So that's in the way. So I got you know way late into doing different things and working on. James Bond movie, right? And I ended up writing the uh, the original opening for Octopussy wow. and stuff like that. And then, you know, the uh, the Archie Comics thing that we worked on that, and that didn't do anything. So, I, you know, and that was 
publishing the Star Blazer magazines, and then I I I veered off into uh, the heroic fantasy. So I worked with Marcus Boas on that magazine, and I did the Lana of the Lost Land, which is another character I want to uh, bring back, and I've been working on that with Ray Ray on and off for the last couple of years, but I. You know, I, it's another Kickstarter I want to do later in the year. Is that but I have uh, to, is that like a Jungle Girl type of? It's a Jungle Girl, yeah. Okay. But I looked at the stuff that I was working on, and I'm not happy with the story that I concocted. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of like kind of redo the the. I mean, I have the original two stories that were done for Heroic Fantasy Inc. by the late Chris Peppo. Uh, I'm gonna use some of the stuff that I worked on with uh, with Ray, with Ray inking and, and whatever. But I'm not happy with the way it looks, so I'm gonna just kind of pull some panels and redo others, and you know, uh, work on it. And yeah, the storyline, yeah. I I want to change the storyline. The original storyline is like, eh, it's too much Indiana Jones. I want to change it, to get more fire in there. So. A little more Edgar Rice Burroughs and less Indiana Jones. So, okay. So I'm gonna change that, but that's another thing I'm gonna work on. And then I have some other books I'd like to work on, which all these things which I didn't finish in the '80s, because there was one that was supposed to be a, a movie book called Movie Muscles. It was supposed to be a photo book on all the kind of the Hercules type movies and mm-hmm. or what they call the Peplum which I did have a, a contract with a British publisher in the 80s, the late 80s, with my late friend Bill Ferret, who wrote a book called Lure to Tropics. He was also a great artist, and he wrote a lot of articles and stuff on Sheena for Bill Black and everything, and uh, he passed away. And then the, the company went out of business, so so I still have, like, the text, and I have photos, I, so that's something I'm going to try to put together yeah maybe as an amazon you know print on demand and uh um that's another one i I, i'd like to do and then then maybe a compendium of stuff from the old star blazer magazine that i did you know a compendium of yeah 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 yeah. from that um but yeah after i i got married in uh in 89 and I got out of the business and um, I was in the retail business working for Bob's Discount Furniture and doing different stuff, including designing Super Bob for Bob and some other stuff like that. Um, that I retired in 2014 wow. and uh, then I met Ray. Yeah. And so that, that kind of like uh, got me into, hey, I can, because uh, I was thinking at that time even, to redo Astron, but Ray kind of gave me the the impetus and to to get it done because he was doing his book. So yeah, so I I ninety percent I, I have to thank Ray for for that. Well, I have to say I've never met a workhorse like Ray before. That man just pushes stuff out constantly. He's always working on stuff. Ray has enough backlog material for like thirty books. Yeah, so he's got like. Uh, and I have them now. I've been buying them the eleven by seventeen folders with all the pages. Yeah, yeah. And he's got this whole row of books, and he constantly shows me this stuff. It's like stuff he did like thirty years ago or whatever. Even stuff he did like in high school, which is great. I said, yeah. print this. You know, it's a matter of, you know, if we had unlimited, you know, funds, we could do all this stuff. So it's a little at a time, but yeah, yeah. yeah he's Ray's a genius. But I don't want him to be here. I don't want him to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want his head to be big enough, but yeah, he comes up with these ideas of like, like, like the the Western thing that we're doing. Mm-hmm. It's a it, it, it's a joke. It started out as a joke, and then all of a sudden that, now we 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 kind of finished it. Yeah, uh, the Astron Kid. So we started doing this. I have to tell you guys this. So we're at Ray's house. So the girlfriend Phyllis, we just saw. Her, that comes with me, and she's she's talking. So she came to to see Ray's wife because she makes jewelry. So two of them yakking it up, 
and we were supposed to leave by like nine or ten o'clock. I don't want to say. So by like midnight, mm-hmm. we're Ray and I are still waiting. So we're like in Ray's studio. So we're going through the the internet looking at the uh, the must read comics site. Mm-hmm. You know they have every kind. So we we started looking at all the the old Marvel Western stuff from the fifties and sixties. Yeah. Joe Manley and and uh, you know uh, <clears throat> Kirby and Don Heck and all, and we're looking at this. Uh, this is great stuff, you know. Yeah. So it's like, so Ray goes, "Hey, let me go and swipe a couple of these covers and do it because he's got his character, um, uh, uh his, his black cowboy character, uh, uh, Lone Star, you know, and uh, uh and then." I made a joke of that. Yeah, what a what if like a guy Astron like uh go into a time warp and he like pops into into there. What, what would happen if he's like in the old west? So then we sit to, to come up with this the story idea where Astron goes through a time warp and he is stranded in the old west. So he meets these Western characters and teams up with them, you know. So we came up with a story. <laughs> so we finished inking it. So we were, mm-hmm. we did some layouts and I did the pencils and Ray's inked it. So I think we've got I don't know like eighteen page story. Oh well, we can do a Kickstarter on this too. So we're calling it the Astron Kid, and we did the cover like one of the mighty Marvel Western covers with the three characters. You know. Oh okay, yeah yeah yeah. So so we, we've come up with this kind of spin off. It's just kind of like it's not it's not really connected to anything else. It's just kind of like a goofy spin off. You know, to do a, yeah, it's fun to do a western. No one does westerns anymore. Now all of a sudden, I was saying, now other people are starting to do westerns now. Like, uh, oh. you, you know, I mean, I think I think I, I've always liked westerns in both comic form, film, TV. I've always loved that. Um, and you're right, you, you don't normally see westerns, but uh, but people are starting to bring them back. Um, well, well, the Mandalorian is basically a western. Oh, of course. Well, Star Wars in general is a is yeah, is it a is. Western. But Mandalorian, and I've said it, and now people are saying it. Basically, the Mandalorian is a space version of Have Gun Will Travel. You know, yeah, uh, which was the old show with uh, Paladin. You mm-hmm. know, but uh, um, uh, yeah, no, I, ne- I never watched that show, but I, I always saw it as a as, as a sci fi version of like Lone Wolf and Cub. You know, right? What what Mandalorian? Yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah, uh, it's a great show. I love yeah. it. I haven't seen the new season. It, 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 it's good. It's really good. And it's, uh, there's one more season to go. I guess the last season. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, uh, Mandalorian. And <clears throat> so I think uh, Westerns are going to come back in some form. Yeah. Because I think people are getting tired of the superhero. I know I'm kind of kind of getting burnt out with the Marvel heroes already. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it seems that I haven't been to Disneyland or Disney World lately, but it seems to me that like Donald Duck and Mickey have been like kind of shoved to the side. I know, isn't it sad? Except on my body, they're always on. Right, but they're, like <laughs> shoved to, they're, they're like shoved to the side. I mean, I want to do cartoons of of like people coming to Disney World, and Mickey and Donald are are like have like a tin cup in their hand, asking for handouts. You know. Uh, you know, Spider Man has taken over. I mean, it's well, kind of sad. Actually, I don't know if you know this, um, but the Universal Studios, um, like where they have, I guess in Florida, the Islands of Adventure, where they have the Marvel heroes. I don't know if you you knew this, but they will never lose the rights to to those Marvel characters as long as they keep them '90s style. They have a they have a contract. That as long as they keep them to that '90s style, they will never lose the rights in the park to the Marvel characters. So, D- so Disney can actually sell Marvel action figures and all this Marvel stuff, but they don't really have a Marvel presence in the park, at least in 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 Disney World in Florida, right. because Universal has those rights. That's pretty funny. So, because when they made the deal, but um, but obviously they're all Star Wars now. But right. uh, but that's the thing. Yeah. But I think uh, California has some Marvel stuff. It's a, there, there was some kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. But I, I think that's pretty funny because because <clears throat> Universal made that deal in the 
I think the 70s or 80s for all these characters. Mm -hmm. And up until recently, they still had the, they may still have the rights to, to um, like the Hulk and Submariner to do like separate movies. But, mm -hmm. but I guess they made a deal allowing Submariner to be a character in the black, but I don't think they could actually do a Submariner movie unless it's yeah. like co produced by Universal. Yeah. Same with the Hulk. They can't do a Hulk movie. It's got to be like Universal and Marvel. Like the Spider Man has to be like Sony and Sony, Marvel. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's pretty fun. I think that's pretty funny. I was wondering about that, like, you know, because Universal had all the Marvel characters, like, oh, it was, uh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, I was under the impression that they were closing the Wizarding World in, in Florida. I haven't heard that. Um, I've actually, my wife and I have been talking about maybe taking a trip to Universal because we, we're, you know, we're big Disney fans, but we've never, we haven't been to Universal in like 10 years, maybe right. longer. So we're like, we should check it out and see what's going on there. Yeah, I, I, like, I've never been to Orlando. I mean, I would mm. like to, to see it, but mm. um, I don't know if I can afford to the prices of Disney. I mean, no I've one been, can these days. <laughs> I've been to Disney twice, Disneyland, mm -hmm. but both times for free because I knew people at Disney in the publicity department in New York, so they arranged for me to get a free pass. Yeah. So both times I went, I got in for free, and I got all kinds of freebies and stuff. Yeah, no, that's but, nice. But that, that was back in the 80s, not anymore. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, it would be nice to see that, but I think I think Universal is a little cheaper. It's a little uh, cheaper. Based on the way things are, from what I can tell, yeah, at the moment. But um, yeah, I mean, but it's not as much to do as there is in Disney World. No, no, no. I, I've been to the Universal in, in L.A. And again, that was the 80s. Um, and I did get on the, the King Kong ride, which was great. I remember that. Yeah, but... Uh, the last time I was in L.A. with my cousin when we were filming this uh, little movie that was before COVID, like 2018, mm. uh, we were supposed to go to Universal, but then it just just kind of like the, the time went, you know. So so we had yeah. to choose. Do we go to Universal or do we go to lunch with George Lazenby? Mm. Uh, we'll go to lunch with George. So that was yeah. – so James Bond won out. So we went to lunch with George. <laughs> So, uh, and that's another story. George is hysterical, but he filmed a little, the little promo thing for my cousin's movie Z Dead End. But it's still the movie's still unfinished because of COVID. So he yeah. managed to do like half the movie. So <coughs> I'm not sure what is going on, and we wanted to finish the movie this year. But <coughs> yeah. but George said that he would be in it. He'd do to finish it. So you know, he's yeah. a cool guy. That's cool. What? But uh, aside from that, I'm just trying to think of any other funny astronaut stories. So, yeah, we got all these pages done. So, we get the Kickstarter. Guys, go to the Kickstarter. Yeah. When it, when, it, when it goes live, go on there now. Sign up. You'll get the email when it goes live. Go to give me money. We want to get a lot of money. <laughs> if I get enough money, then. <laughs> We might even do it in color. Right now, it's going to be black and white, just like the old days with Warren and the Marvel magazines. Gloria's black and white. You get to see all the artwork and everything. I, I love black and white books. Um, hold on. Let me give you the screen so we can see it again. Okay. Yeah, sure. You know, and I've said this on the show multiple times. I've, I don't know if I've ever talked about it with you, but I've talked about it with Ray. And I don't understand why people aren't doing these black and white grayscale books as much as you know i mean that's gorgeous art in there but like when you look at at what sells these days it's 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 graphic novels it's manga so if you're well that I, I was just going to say that um the manga is outselling the american comic books yeah they are and they're all in and they're all black scale. and white yeah they're all black and white gray so it's it, really you know we're talking about the the um, American comic books and they make these movies but the things that the kids are reading they're not buying really the, the trade paperbacks if you go to Barnes & Noble 
there's mm -hmm. twice as many shelves of manga as there are American mm -hmm. comic books. They're all made mostly black and white. Yeah. And that's what they, and the artists in Japan do it black and white. They still sell Zipatone yeah. in Japan. It's really expensive, but you can still get Zipatone in Japan. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. You know, but the American publishers, it, 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 it the people, the people working right now for the companies, mm -hmm. maybe not the independent, but maybe the two majors, mm -hmm. the, the people working there, I think are, I don't know if they're mostly male, but they're maybe in their 20s or whatever. And they're just like set in stone in a certain way. And they're not, you know, not aware of or uh, don't care about other ideas. They just want to do the same crap all the time. Well, you know, I was watching a YouTube video. I forget who it was. It might have been Eric July's video, the guy who did the the Kickstarter and made like millions off his Kickstarter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ago. Um, and he was saying something that I've been thinking about, and I'm like, why? And and I don't know if it was him. I just it might have been him. And he, you know, whoever I watched was saying that. People are, you know, are only are only remaking and working on things that have a proven track record, but they right. are, but they're they're pushing it so far into the ground, they're basically burying it and destroying it. That and right. they're not looking at these new properties. Sure, Spider Man is a popular property, so make a hundred Spider Man movies until they're all garbage. You know what I mean? Like, right. and it's like, and and. Because, you know, you were mentioning how you're a little tired of the Marvel heroes. I have right. come out and said I haven't been happy since Endgame ended with, like, a Marvel story. Um, right. But what I find is it's not the characters that I'm tired of. It's the storytelling that I'm tired of. Right. I find the stories to be bad because all they're doing is they're just trying to push out and make money off an established brand and not work at building up new characters, not building up new stories, looking for where things were. You know, when Hollywood first started, where did they go? They went to the newspaper strips and they had serials of Dick Tracy and Blondie right. and, and, and Superman and you name it. They were there. Captain America, Batman. They, they, they all had these movie serials and stuff. Hollywood has always gone to comics, but back then it was new. Back then it was exciting. Back then people were reading the books. People were reading the strips. Right. These days, these heroes, unless you're someone like us who grew up on it or work in the industry, they don't know these characters, you know, the, the normal audience outside of what they're shown in the theaters. And they don't they don't see the, the they don't know the good stories that that could be told from the comics. They don't know, um, you know, the details of, of really what makes those characters special because they're only focusing on certain key elements that moviegoers would you know would 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 uh, connect with over what would really happen if they sat down and read a comic and you know? they're using storylines that are 40 years old yeah i mean yeah, and that's the whole thing they they're not coming up with a, a new idea yeah. they're basically just taking storylines from 40 years ago and um just updating it so the whole Donos thing is from like the mid 80s no I or the secret invasion basically is the scroll war that's yeah again so they're not coming up with a new idea or a new character now they just i just noticed that now they've got a whole thing in comics Ooh, ms marvel dies oh, yeah i just saw that, that one before where have we seen that one before? Oh, Every Ms. Marvel's died. Oh, no, everyone's going to buy it because she died. No, and then she'll come back in six months. Yeah. So, what it, so, so now Ms. Marvel dies, and in November, they're coming out with the movie with Ms. Marvel in it and the other Marvels. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to die, and then by then she'll come back to life, and it'll, it'll be for that. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? It's, it's, it's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, come on. It's like it's like when Captain America died, and then we, oh, and he came back. 
We know we know he's going to come back. It was Captain Marvel's like the only one who passed away that hasn't come back. Right, the original Captain. Yeah, Marvel. the original. Well, Marvel. Oh, well, well Marvel. Yeah, he's the only one that actually died and he stayed dead. Yeah. You know, which was but, a great uh, book, by the way. But, oh. Yeah, Jim Star, Jim Starlin Star- again. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jim Starlin, my hero. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's three guys that I want to do Astron pinup, mm-hmm. and I, I and I got to get him, but I know how I won't be able to afford him. Howie Chaykin, mm-hmm. who's jealous of me because I still have hair. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as we told me last time I saw him, um, Al Milgram mm-hmm. and uh, Jim Starlin. Those are three guys I want to do an Astron pinup. So, so all if you great. guys are out there listening, give me a, a DM on uh, Facebook, all right? <laughs> if you three guys are listening, all right? In any, in any case, uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's the whole that's the whole problem with this entire genre of stuff. So hopefully with Astron, there'll be some uh, new type of uh, storylines I'm doing. And it's kind of like retro, too, because it's really it's it's based in the 80s, 70s, 80s type yeah. stuff. So it's, it's 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 a throwback. It's uh, basically a, a non-woke t- type uh, situation here, you know? Yeah. But I do have in volume two, there are going to be because... The big battles that you guys want, buildings explode. All that happens in volume two. But we have the setup in volume one, which we have big battles and, and things blowing up also. Yeah. But And uh, and I'm bringing in uh, some of the characters that, um, well, you guys would have seen it, but a lot of the Lost Land is going to be in uh, volume two. Okay. How she gets there, I can't tell you now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have a couple other characters that that were from um, the days when I was doing the Battalion comic with George Perez. We had a bunch of our characters that we both created or co-created. One's called Pars Veer, which is, is, is a robot cyborg. Before Cyborg, mm-hmm. so Cyborg really is that Perez created is really kind of a offshoot of this character, Pars Veer, half human. Pars Veer is Latin for half human. Oh, okay. Um, then there's a, another character called Amazonia, which is an Amazon character based on a, a public domain character, Amazonia, yeah. which came out. Um, and, uh, um, and then there's another character called uh, Hoppy, which is this alien character that Tom Hearn created, which I threw in there to make him happy. Oh, cool. <laughs> but, but it's going to be kind of a team, the, the battalion team, which I'm bringing that name back. Because Perez and I did this comic book called The Battalion, which was like a team comic. And it was kind of like Teen Titans before Teen Titans. And we had all these characters that we created. And uh, Astron was there, too. But we didn't print it because we didn't know how to do that, right? Yeah. So we just basically drew it on the, the Woolworths paper again and and <laughs> hand-colored it, stapled it together, and passed it around the school. Yeah. So everybody, everybody read it. And then um, one day uh, we were in one of the classes, and the dean of discipline, Father McCormick, was running the class, and he caught one of the guys with the book. So he looked at it and said, what is this garbage? And tore it in half, threw it in the garbage. Oh, wow. So I managed to retrieve it and uh, eventually tape it back together. And uh, then a few years later, when George and I were both in the in the 70s, when we were both at Marvel, I gave it back to George. Mm-hmm. And George has since, well, he, he did. He, he passed away now. Mm-hmm. But when he had his Facebook page, he, he, he scanned all those pages. So it was available. I did... I did copy all those pages, so yeah. So I do have a um, a copy of them, and um, and this this fellow Steve, who was a good friend of his, he's an art dealer, and he's been helping uh, George's widow by selling some of the artwork. I told him, look for that, look for that book, because we could, you know, reprint that and give the proceeds to Carol, um, George's wife, but. 
He says he, he can't really find it. It's somewhere in his office. I'm sure there's like a ton of stuff there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But I mean, I do have scans of, of the pages that he made. So, so it, it, it's very early, George, but the stuff was very dynamic even back then, 1971, you know. Yeah. But I'm bringing back that name to Battalion for these heroes. So, And there's also another uh, project with Astron I want to do, which I started doing a couple of years ago during the pandemic, is uh, Astron of the Golden Age. So to do Astron as if he came out during the Golden Age of comics. Oh, nice. So I've done a, a, about a dozen um, fake covers. Mm-hmm. Um, that Tom Herninked that are kind of based on uh, some covers of of like Golden Age Superman or Captain Marvel covers. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I created like like a, an Astron family. So there's Kid Astron, and then there's uh, Astron girls, so kind of like Captain Marvel Junior and and Mary Marvel. You know. Yeah. I've done some, and then I did a story, which was uh, Astron's origin story. Uh, I did an 18-page story, which uh, I did it in like, <clears throat> like a 1940 style. Okay. So, eventually, that's another book I want to come out with, just kind of like a goof, just kind of like, and to get a couple of guys. Maybe you will do one of the stories. I'd be happy you know? to. It goes, 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 because it's going to be kind of like a uh, astronaut from the. The, the the 40s to the 60s. Okay. Remember that book that was like a Superman from the from the 30s to the to the 70s or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be something like that. So, uh, maybe I'll have you do one of the stories that's supposed to be like a 1950s story. Okay. So that can be done like in a CC Beck style. Absolutely. You know, uh, and then I then I, I I want someone else to do it in like a Wally Wood style. Because I have it, I did another one uh, called Astronaut Agents, which is a knockoff of Thunder Agents, one cover. So, okay. so it'll be a whole like book of like faux uh, uh, Golden Age, Silver Age astronaut stories, which never happened. <laughs> you know, which, which is pretty funny. It's 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 funny stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but in any case, uh, that that's the plan. But the plan now is uh, to get this Kickstarter going. So most likely it's going to be Monday, guys. This coming Monday, the twenty second. Um, that it's going to go live, and then uh, it's going to run for forty days. So I okay. want to be biblical, not thirty, but forty days. Forty days and forty nights. So we're, we're running there, and then hopefully we'll get our moolah, and then uh, uh, we're planning to. Have all the rewards for October because I wanted to give enough time to. We still have to do some lettering and some other stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, we may we may get your rewards out earlier in October. But we want to have enough time panning, yeah. but the rewards may go out earlier, so you may get an early reward on this. So we nice. wanted to give ourselves enough time so we could get the thing done right. Yeah, but the artwork is all done. It's just a matter of. The packaging and the production and and all that stuff, all that good stuff. Well, I gotta say, I'm looking forward to uh, to backing this project. I am right. looking forward for you doing that too. <laughs> I mean, listen, um, you know me. I I love I love indie stuff. I love uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, how many years I've been telling you? I just love the design. I just every time. I look at it. I just, I just, I just think he's a fun character um, as an artist to draw, you know? Yeah. So I, and, and I like the classic stuff. I like retro stuff. I love, you know, I love all those. And, and you're, you know, I love science fiction. I mean, I've talked on my show about my Dax Photon, which is a tribute to uh, sci-fi stories. I've, I was working on a sci-fi. A lot of my stuff is sci-fi. So you're 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 hitting every like box. You're checking every box for me right now. So <laughs> well, that's, I'm excited. That's good. I'm glad I'm, I'm I'm glad I'm doing something right. Yeah. You know? So and and I know there's a lot more people out there like me. So as soon as your Kickstarter goes live, I will be sharing it as well 
to make sure people know about it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, listen, this is this is great stuff. You have you you've had some. I, I like that you have all these ideas that you've been um, that you've been working on and stuff. You know, things obviously happen in life, which is why my books aren't out right now either. And now all of a sudden you're coming back and you're coming back like hard and you got, I got this volume. I'm ready to do volume two. I'm working on this project. Right. Like you're, you're really, you know, it, it may have taken you some time, but you, you got this, you got this book and this brand that's going to just, you know, you're going to start pumping out. Well, I've got 10 of these big folders with artwork in it. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here and I got to buy some more of them off of yeah. Amazon, the folders. Yeah, all yeah. the artwork. So, I mean, yeah, I'm constantly coming up with it. And then I've got Ray. Of course, then I've let Ray take the character. And so he's got a book. One of his issues of the World War Superheroes is concerning Astron mixed in with his. And he's got a different take on the character, which I love. Mm -hmm. Because it's not my take on the character. Yeah. So it's kind of an alternate universe take on the character. And but he's got some great designs. Was Ray's got these like crazy ass designs, which <clears throat> almost look like they're from Alien. Yeah, Alien. You know that the, the Ridley Scott Alien. Mm. Uh, so I mean, so Ray's got his take on the characters, which I enjoy. You know, it's kind of like you, know, you got the Kurt Swan Superman. Mm -hmm. Then you have the. Wayne Boring Superman, the Al Plastino Superman, the John Byrne Superman. So you got different takes on it, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'd like to see, like, the Mike Gracia Astron and the Ray Felix Astron. One day, I could, I could, I'll do, I'll do it. Like I said, I'll draw one of your stories for you, but if you want me to do a little, uh, little short story on my own, a couple of pages, I'll be happy to. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, <laughs> when I have the time, I will come up with the uh, two uh, Marvel style uh, the Marvel method which I which I use mm -hmm. which I learned from Stanley himself to do the the synopsis and mm -hmm. then let the artist go wild and then um, uh, 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 do the dialogue now one of the reasons why I think that the Marvel comics and some of those don't look as good now as they did back then is they're no longer using the Marvel method. Yeah. So all the Marvel writers are writing full scripts. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually trying the Marvel method by myself right now. I know that sounds weird as me being the artist and the writer, but I was spending so much time writing scripts that I said, you know what, I got to stop focusing on the scripts because I'm always trying to make them perfect. Let me just come up with a little paragraph of what the story is about. Maybe an outline of each page, a little bullet right. point I want on this. And then afterwards, I will go back in and add text to it. Or as I'm drawing it out, I'll be like, oh, this would be a good dialogue for here. Right. Let me throw it in. So I'm kind of working that way on a few stories. And I'm actually moving faster than when I was focusing just on scripts. Well, well we as artist writers, mm -hmm. like Ray is an artist writer, mm -hmm. that's the one thing also by doing this, I kind of cut out the middleman so I really didn't have to hire any other artists except Tom Ahern, yeah. inking. But um, uh, we can do that. Yeah. Whereas most of the time, most of the, the artists now they're just hired artists. Yeah. So they give a script and they draw it. And some of the stuff looks great. Some of it looks boring. Mm -hmm. And I think that if they had more artist writers or if they did more Marvel method, yeah. then but the problem is, 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 is now the way things are. In the old days, the artists and writers, a lot of them, you would go to the office and meet and hang out and do what we're doing here. Yeah, chatting, whatever. Um, but now it's like, well, you know, the artist might be in Argentina, and the writer might be in like uh, uh, California. So it's like, well, it's not easy just to hand him a script. Yeah. So you don't have to back and forth. Or also, it's like, well, to give the artist a a outline, 
and then it's like, and he's in like uh, Bolivia. It's kind of like, well, this, it gets lost in translation. Mm -hmm. So, so you don't have the flexibility you had back then. Yeah, where everybody lived basically, ninety percent of the people lived in the New York City metropolitan area. Yeah, everyone lived in Connecticut, Jersey, the city, or Long Island. So everyone could come in and meet at the Marvel offices, the DC offices, whatever. And you don't have that now. Now everything's scattered. DC and Marvel, okay. they're in California. There's some Marvel offices here, but you can't even visit the offices anymore. Yeah. You're not even allowed to come up there. So, so the, 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 the kind of the human quality that there was that you feel when you look at an old comic book, there's a human quality to it that yeah. I think is kind of missing now. <clears throat> the comics are kind of cold now. I'll give an example. Today I went to uh, to uh, All Year Comics in Harrison, yeah. and I picked up only one book, The Avengers number one reprint. Okay. Yeah, I saw you post about that. Yes. <clears throat> and you look at the book, and there's a lot of energy there. Yeah. You know, and then you look at the new books, and it's boring. Like everyone's like pole stick. There's no energy there. It's like everyone they have to use reference. No one can. Kirby would just go in there, or these guys would just go in there and just draw, and just lay it out, yeah. boom, 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 and it's done. There's no energy there with the new books, you know. Which is why I'm trying. I want to convince Tom Brevoot or some people at Marvel, let's reprint some of these annuals. I want to get it. A reprint of the Strange Tales Annual One, <coughs> the Fantastic Four Annual One. Yeah. Uh, they already did last year the reprint of the Spider Man Annual One, which is great. I think I might I have, have that picked again. that up. Yeah, the great, the good that. I'll pay $10 for these things. I don't care. Yeah. <coughs> Those are great books. Yeah. You know? I mean, the ones now, I mean, they're okay, but. It's a different audience, I guess, whatever. But the bottom line is I think that these reprint books are selling very well because they keep doing them. Yeah. No, no, they are. I, 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 those are some books I do pick up quite regularly when I'm at the store, um, when I go to, when I go to uh, the Spider's Web. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's a uh, – uh, I, 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 I haven't really read Marvel or much – any marvels in years i have hardly read i haven't read a lot of dc i've picked a few things up but i am going to agree with you it, and i don't think it's the way a lot of it's done because a lot is done digitally these days but they work great it's it's not that it's i think it comes down to the type of stories they're telling and the uh, and the style of art in the books there's not a lot right. of artists that are wowing me as artists i feel a lot of the work is is very um is very stiff um and 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 like you were saying it's it doesn't have the energy of of the old days you know but it's it's the it's the uh it's the look of what people want today well what know? it is it seems to be to me at least that mm -hmm. they're copying jim lee but doing it badly. They're just it's basically copying Jim Lee. And so when you go to a con and you go to Artist Alley, everyone looks the same. Now, whether you hate him or love him, whatever, Rob Liefeld, you see it and you say, that's Rob Liefeld. You yeah. don't have to see who did this, whatever. You know, that style is Rob Liefeld or McFarland. Hmm. That's McFarland. Okay. Yeah. Whether you love him or hate him, they have a style. But these guys now, it all looks photoshopped, or they're they're tracing or whatever, or it's all posed from photos, and you can tell. And some of them, you can even tell what photos they use for reference. And and you know what? Maybe that's why I see it as stiff because they're they're copying right. or you know pose. I mean, I I use reference. I think we all use reference. We but all. Listen, it's I, I I I'd be the last one. To, I use it all the time. I swipe yeah. all the time. I'm sorry. Yeah. But you know what? Two guys I worked with. Wally Wood and Neil Adams taught me to fucking swipe and Rich Buck. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and when, when I gave uh, 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 Neil a copy of my reprint of of the uh, Astro Comics, the story from Galaxia, which I used a lot of 
Adam Swipes. And I had to use Adam Swipes in the first thing, too. Mm-hmm. And he pointed him out. He's laughing. I said, well, Neil, you taught me to do that. He goes, you're right. So, hey, you know, that, that's, what he t- that's what he taught everybody. You know, to swipe. Yeah. And, he, and he had usually, all these guys had swipe files. Yeah. All the old artists had swipe. You know, now everyone has Google, but that cabinets of newspapers and magazines or whatever, you know, that's why I have all this crap in storage because half of that stuff is stuff I had for, for reference, magazines, yeah. stuff, which I got to get rid of. Um, but I'm just saying that's the difference between now and then, you know. But it is what it is. However, I do love the anime and the manga. There's still styles there, you know. I do. I do too. I'm actually. I don't know if I have it. Here. Oh, yeah. I haven't started this book. I bought it a, a little bit ago, but I read the first issue of this. Um, I, I forgot who recommended it to me, but it's called The Promise Neverland. I don't know if you've ever seen this manga. It's more no, of like no. a teen manga, but it's like a teen horror. If I th- if I remember correctly, and it's it's basically this world where um, these these kids are growing up in an orphanage, and when they uh, reach a certain age, they're basically sent away to another place, and it turns out that um, demons or just monsters in general are ruling the world, and these these um, uh, what's it called? These orphans, these kids, are basically being raised to be food for these monsters. Uh, so, like, ew. they take these tests, and if they're intelligent enough, they get to move on to the certain. So, like, the monsters are looking for specific, like, there's a, you know, I guess if they're intelligent and they're healthy, they're a, uh, they're a delicacy. They can get more money or whatever for them. Uh, um, and so, I haven't, I, 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 there's like, I think. I think they're in the twenties in the volumes of books for these right now, but right. I got to start issue two and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and I'll knock this off in, in like an hour one day, but I just need to sit down and do it. But it's, well, it's... this is what I'm saying that <clears throat> this is where the creativity comes in yeah. from, from, from this stuff. And, you know, because the publishers there in Japan, they mm-hmm. also, it was a whole different ball game. They, yeah. they give, the artists and writers' rights and money and yeah. you know, which they respect their their artists and writers. Well, they, they, well, that's how <laughs> even in, in Europe they respect the artists and you. Yeah, you're getting you're getting more money and you get money from the government or whatever here. You know, they 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 don't want to. I mean, look what's happening with the Writers Guild. You know, they, yeah, they, they they treat you hired help like shit. Uh, someone said years ago that. The uh, the comic business is the less like plantation mentality. So this is why you, also you're not seeing really a lot of new characters coming out of the the majors. Yeah. Because no one wants to create something where they're not going to get the rights for. Yeah, exactly. So they, they 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 hold off until they find an indie publisher or whatever, and then they they do it for them. Yeah. Whether it be Dark Horse or Image or whatnot. You know, they're not, you're not going to see any new characters coming out at Marvel or DC unless it's just a, a retcon of something they have already. Yeah, but the, the, also with Marvel being owned by Disney and, and DC, you know, Warner Brothers and whatever, it's it's a whole uh, it's a whole other corporate structure than just going oh, yeah. to something like Image, where Image is just Image, you know? Right, exactly. And, uh, you know, so... I, and, but By the being, way, what did you what did you ahead. think of of those covers that they had <clears throat> recently of uh, Marvel, where they have all the Disney characters as Marvel characters? Oh, I, I I haven't seen them all, but I've I whoops, hold on, looks like my computer's going to sleep for some reason. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's uh, it, you know, I mean, they are what they are. I I don't want to knock them. Um, because I, I I can't, but they weren't books I'd want to spend money on, you know. I'll say it that right. way. Right, these were just the covers they were doing, not the yeah, stuff. yeah. But no, no, I know, but I'm just saying the, the covers weren't turning me the on. The one thing which I which I don't know if they've done, which I think they they should do, is is and I think they're missing a bet here, but I don't know what the deal is with 
Lucasfilm and Disney. I'm surprised that they haven't done like a cartoon version of, let's say, Star Wars, but all the characters are, are, are Disney characters. So you have like like Luke is Mickey Mouse and mm-hmm. and uh, Leia is Minnie, you know. Yeah, they, uh, they sold those figures. I'll tell you that. I actually I actually own I don't know how many years ago, but I bought it in Disney World and like um they had it as the Muppets as as Star Wars figures and right. they had uh they had Disney characters too. I, I know the Muppets I bought and Kermit was Luke and, and Fozzie was was Chewbacca, Gonzo was um was Darth Vader, uh you know, so it was, you know, they had they had all those. But I, I'm surprised that they haven't done like an actual cartoon of, yeah, you know, like a feature cartoon of, you know, the Disney characters as these characters. That Which might be one day. That, you never know. I, I think I think that, would, but but again, we I'm surprised they haven't done that with the Marvel characters that have like, but it will happen eventually. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just you know, we'll see now. If, if 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 that would come into Kickstarter, people see Astro. We've seen that one of the companies. Oh, you know, we we we'd like to use this character now. You know. Well, hey, so, you know, maybe that, Image that, or something will do. Astro that's where you make your money. That's yeah. Yeah, we, or, or the the Netflix the Netflix animated series produced by Bruce Tim. <laughs> uh, we'll see how long the the uh, um, the. Uh, uh, the writer strike goes on, but who knows? We we may have AI doing the cartoons or writing it. it we don't know. We don't know listen, what's going on. AI. I I don't want to. That that could start a whole other conversation. We've well, that, that, that's a whole going. other show. Yeah. No. Listen. There's a lot I've been researching with AI, and uh, I have I have a lot of mixed reviews on AI, like feelings on on AI. Personally, I played with with um, redoing the. The story that I was doing with Lana, the uh, mm. chapter three. So I played with doing it all with AI pictures, mm-hmm. and I had that chat, and it. it and I had them. I described. And I actually had them. I think I posted some of it. Yeah, I saw it. It, it. it wasn't bad. You know, it was just, but it took about like thirty tries to get one that's good. Yeah. That's, you know, that's I, mean, I may use some of those as reference to redraw them, but yeah, so, but but it was it basically like, like, eh, you know, it's it, it's gonna be a while before you could do anything with this, you know. But for reference and redraw it, some of it as photo reference, some of it's not bad, you know. But but yeah, basically, you can say like, uh, you know, it, 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 it's too too bizarre right now with this AI stuff. Yeah, but we shall see. So I guess uh, we're. Uh, Oh, it's eleven fifteen already. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say we need to wrap up um, yes. for the night. And but you know what? Listen, uh, Tom, I really enjoyed chatting with you. I always enjoy talking with you. But um, exactly. I, I, I uh, got to do lunch. So we got to. We will. You know, give me a few weekends. Once June comes, I think I'll have a better, uh, right, a better schedule, and uh, I can, you know, come by you or whatever. We can, we can meet up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not you're not far. You're a good what, just twenty minutes maybe from me. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Very close. So, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up. I want to thank you for coming on. If you want to hang out thank backstage you. for a moment, you're welcome. We can use a little applause here. We need some more applause. Oh, let me let me get the applause up for you applause. here. Where's thank you, thank you. I like that. That's good. There you go. That, that's just, right. we had that's, to give you a We three. needed that. We needed that applause. So. <laughs> thank you. That's for right. our audience out there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, I'm just going to drop you backstage. I'm going to do my wrap up. If you want to hang out a few, you're welcome to. Yeah, sure. All right. No problem. All right. All right. All right, guys. So that was me chatting with Tom Siaka and for a little bit, Ray Felix. Um, you know, thank you for everybody who watched you know, live, who's going to watch later. Please remember in the comments, there is a link to the Kickstarter. If you go to it today, it'll allow you to save it. So you're notified 
when Tom makes the uh, Kickstarter live, which will be Monday as of right now. He may change his mind, but as of right now, it's Monday. So uh, make sure you click on that save so you're notified and, you know, back it when it comes out. In the meantime, uh, I will see you guys later. I have a great guest next week. I'll let you know who it is when the ads start coming out. I really have a fun show planned. Then, and on the, I believe it's the 31st, the last Wednesday, I think it's the 31st. I have a really uh, fun returning guest. You'll, you'll definitely enjoy that. I will see you guys soon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.